What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. I'm doing great. Super excited you, today. You excited today? I am, Chief. I am. Let's go. Awesome. Awesome. And so we got a, a special co-host today, uh, my brother in arms, a, a, a fellow devil dog, and the senior enlisted advisor for the Defense Commissary Agency, Sergeant Major Michael Salcedo. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, Chief. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. And I'm sorry for calling you, sir, because I know you work for a living. I, I You know, I got that. <laughs> so, happy so birthday for, to you, too. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Yeah, so first off, just wishing you a, a happy Marine Corps birthday. Oh, you're 245 years old or something? Right. That's right. Man, man, you don't look a day over 244, man. <laughs> and Thank I see you. you got the you got the cake in the background. So uh, for, for those That's that right, don't know, commissary, uh, commissary cake, baby, we, we represent. So for those that don't know, uh, the Marine Corps has a cake cutting ceremony where they get the, the youngest and the oldest Marine in the room to, to cut the cake. So I'll let you be the youngest and I'll be the oldest and we can have a virtual cake cutting ceremony. OK, we can do that. That's awesome. Awesome. So uh, Sergeant Major Leah. We have a huge guest with us today. And, and I can tell you, I was pretty calm uh, about this chat coming up. I slept real good last night. It, it was cool. And then I got a text this morning that said uh, the, our promo got posted on his IG page. And oh, my goodness. So <laughs> now, mind you, this, this, this our next guest has 200 million, over 200 million followers on his IG, which is, and I did some Louisiana math and some Marine Corps math, and that's equivalent to about 63% of the population in the United States of America. And so I kind of compared that to my following on IG. And so my following is 504, which is equivalent to my fifth graders graduating class. So, so, so I got a little, little catching up to do. But uh, after all that, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to think, OK, what do you say to millions of people that potentially could be watching this? And all I could come up with was like, hey, how you guys doing? So uh, let me stop rambling, Leah, and please introduce today's guest. Chief, yes, sir. I'm thrilled to introduce him. Thank you so much, Chief Osby and Sar Sergeant Major Saucedo for hosting with us. Um, today, we have an A-lister and global entertainment icon with us. He's one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time and has had a tremendous career in Hollywood. He's a big guy, a huge guy, and he has a huge heart for the military. He's here today to boost morale for the military community ahead of Veterans Day. So please join me in welcoming Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Hey. Thank you guys so much for having me on. It's a real pleasure. And as, as I said earlier, when I when I made the post this morning, uh, right before I worked out, uh, uh, this one is an honor. And this is something we've been trying to coordinate for months now. So I'm so happy uh, that we bought it all together. And here we are. We are very happy to. So. <clears throat> Dwayne, thank you so much for joining us. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any comments or questions that you want to share with him, drop those there too. Now's a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because we have lots of cheap chat guests lined up all year and even into 2021. So before we started uh, this interview today, uh, Julie was like, what do, what do we call him? Do we call him Dwayne? Do we call him Mr. Johnson? Do we call him The Rock or Mr. Rock? Uh, what, 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 what do you want us to call, call you today? Big Daddy. You, you know what? Big Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Chief. Oh, man. You know what? It, do, it doesn't really matter what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to call him Big Daddy, Chief? Or are you going to call him I Big am Daddy? Not, I'm not calling <laughs> grown man Big Daddy. That is that <laughs> Rock is fine. Rock is fine. Rocker DJ is totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, DJ, uh, we're super excited to have you join us today. Uh, it is so amazing that you took some time out of your schedule to boost the morale of the military viewers. Can you tell us where you're joining us fr from today? Joining you guys from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we have been, um, we've been quarantining and sequestering at the same time we've actually been in full, uh, full throttle production. Uh, we were shooting a film called Red Notice, which will be available uh, for audiences around the world in the military uh, probably uh, in about a year, uh, next holiday season. And uh, we were shut down with the pandemic in March. 
uh, right in the middle of it. And um, much like um, you guys in the military and so many people around the world, the show must go on. So we had to pivot and you know show our agility a little bit and show our strategy. And so we were able to galvanize and bring everybody back together. So we're in the middle of shooting now. Um, and as a matter of fact, we only have a couple of days left and it's been about a 16 week uh, production. So very happy and very proud of the crew. They've done a tremendous job. Man, so, so you shut down production just for the chief chat? Is that is what just, I'm hearing? Just for the chief chat. By the way, it's true. They're all waiting. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> We've been coordinating this for a very, very long time. So yes, production is there. They're rolling, they're shooting without me. And, and whenever we're done with this, then I'll go over there. Okay. No, we, we definitely appreciate you, though. No, thank you guys for having me. I, I appreciate it. Brock, I imagine uh, you're a pretty busy guy. Uh, how have you been during the pandemic, and uh, how are you spending your uh, your time when you're not working? Well, uh, thank you, Sergeant Major. We, um, you know, when we when we got shut down with the pandemic in March, with the rest of the world, uh, we were forced home, and I was forced home. And 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 the truth is, it, it had been. I I had not had a break like this since I was playing for the University of Miami when I was 18, 19 years old. So. It was, you know, to be on that three, four, five month hiatus was, uh, was exactly what I did and what we did, but also, you know, it was really, um, it wound up being one of the, one of the silver linings of this whole thing was being able to spend real quality time at home with my wife and my little girls and my family and my mom. We moved my mom in cause she's in her seventies. So she was high risk, uh, with this, uh, you know, insidious, uh, virus and so uh so that was good so you know we've just been at home and trying to make the most of it uh playing teacher playing nanny playing daddy playing husband playing best friend things like that but uh and still trying to get the workouts in too which was very very important you know certainly for you know the uh, my mentality awesome awesome so can you tell us what's ahead for you uh what what kind of upcoming projects uh you got coming up that you can tell us about well, let's see. Um, we're going we're gonna to wrap this one, which is Red Notice, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. And the next movie that I have coming up um, down the pipeline that I'm going to start shooting is a, is a movie for DC Comics called Black Adam. And um, Black Adam is uh, one, of the, one of the greatest anti-heroes uh, in the world of comics. And we're going to shoot that right, as of now. It's going to be in April. So we have a nice uh, period of time where I'm still going to be able to be at home and, and relax with the family and spend time especially over the holidays. Um, we launched this year, ironically enough, we launched this year uh, in March when the pandemic hit, we launched a tequila line. And this was a tequila line that I, it's called Terramana Tequila, which I had uh, worked on for a number of years. We're finally able to get it up and running and going. And we built a distillery down in Jalisco, Mexico. We have over 200 very proud employees. Um, and then pandemic came. Uh, but what's interestingly enough, and I'll share this with you guys here, um, and, and certainly in large part due to the military, which now I just found out that Terramana Tequila is in um, almost about 70 or 80 percent of all the bases uh, here in the United States. And uh, we're growing to around the world. Um, we wound up being the biggest tequila launch in the history of all tequilas, and that's over 200 wow. years of tequila. So really, uh, it was very, very special. And speaking of over 200 years, I do want to say happy birthday to, uh, to the Marine Corps. So happy birthday. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rock. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday. That cake looks good there. <laughs> and you can get it at the commissary, people. Commissary the, cake. Commissary cake. Uh, commissary <laughs> cake. It's a commissary <laughs> cake. <laughs> and, and I got a question for you guys. Uh, and how have you guys been? How's the pandemic? Um, you know, when it, when it hit uh, in March, how did it affect the military? Um, how fast did you guys, I'm sure you weren't surprised at, and again, how agile you guys were uh, to act quickly on your feet and continue to maintain. Was it challenging? Uh, oh, um, yeah. So, yeah. So it was, it was a little, it was challenging, obviously, because it was something that we had never dealt with. And so, uh, and so it's kind of like being deployed, but being at home, right? And so, but your your mind frame is when you get deployed, you in the mind frame is I can't leave post. Like I, I'm I'm gonna be on post. I can only do X, Y, and Z. And then you go from this free living to like, no, you're constricted to the base or constricted to your house. Or, and that 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 throws people off a, little, a lot. Uh, of course, we're agile and we look like you know we we just do it all the time. But 
uh, from from my perspective, and I'm and I'm medical by trade, so we were on the front lines uh, uh, where we didn't stop working. We were constantly working. We were making sure that people were safe, uh, trying to make sure you know get people back to the fight. And so uh, for us, it, it it was a huge shift for us. Uh, sorry, Major, I, I I can't speak for you though. Yeah, so I'll tell you when when it hit. Uh, I was in South Korea uh, there, uh, Marine Forces Korea, and uh, the, the primary. Um, goal was to protect the force. Um, General Abrams there and uh, Sergeant Major uh, Tagalakud uh, were there and uh, they protect the force. We shut down and we actually set the standard, uh, if you will, uh, and how to respond not only with the military but the country themselves. The Koreans there, very disciplined, um, follow the rules, wear the mask. And uh, I think if you look back in the news reports, they always look to Korea. They use South Korea as an example of how to, how to kill the virus hey hey show show, show uh dj your mask man you oh yeah yeah you... so i got uh, one of your masks uh, rock right here oh, nice. <laughs> i tell you what it's the most comfortable mask my cousin up in maryland uh, got this for me you should make it uh, a little darker make these darker so it didn't have so much bling and we'll wear them in uniform <laughs> you know, uh, sergeant major thank you so much for that thank you for the support you know we're very proud of that mask it has three layers as you know and comfort was important, quality was important. And, you know, as much as, as loud as, as the things that I do can be at times, I'm right there with you, Sergeant Major. I, I'm not a big bling guy, so we're, we're gonna dial that down. Uh, <laughs> Make them a Marpat color and, and we'll wear them in uniform without the bling. I yes. like it because your face, your lips don't touch the mask on the inside. That's what's really good about it. That's so right. The ladies who wear uh, lipstick, you know, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't need our lipstick touching that. Much. <laughs> I did say the ladies. I did say the ladies. Awesome. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Johnson, as you know, we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, and even Space Force personnel and veterans watching live from all over the world. 2020 has been a bit of a tough year for some. So do you have any words of encouragement to share with our nation's heroes? I do. Um, thank you for asking me that. Probably the most important question we can ask in this one. And um, number one, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your service. And I have, um, it, you know, this has been a really tough, challenging year for all of us. And, you know, I, I'm, I am very proud at still our resiliency. Um, and it certainly starts with our foundation for me and our foundation always starts with our military. So I'm proud of our resiliency. I do believe that we're going to finish this year out strong. I do believe, um, uh, uh, Sergeant Major, you, you mentioned um, what you guys were doing on the ground there in, in, in Korea, and you had, an, uh, to me, an, uh, the operative anchoring word is discipline. And I think as we continue to apply that discipline to everything that we're doing, certainly as we're trying to combat you know, this, uh, this virus and mitigate it, uh, trying to uh, come through the challenges uh, of <clears throat> what's happening now uh, post-election, and everything that we're dealing with then as a country too. So I do believe in, in, in practicing that discipline, getting to a better place, keeping a positive mindset. And especially, you know, the one thing that I will share that, that's helped us through the pandemic and that I really kind of, I try to think about every day, um, not only as, as an anchor of gratitude, but also just trying to find the silver linings. And what I had realized, if you had asked me prior us getting shut down in 2020 with the pandemic, what's the most important thing in your life? Well, hands down, I would have said my family, my little girls, my daughter, my, my, my wife, uh, my close friends whom I love. What the pandemic did for me, uh, and I know it did for a lot of us too, when it's like you were saying, uh, Chief, you know, when you're on post, and, but then you can't leave. Um, what the pandemic did is actually show me the real reason why show me my why and um and i'm very grateful for that so i would say to the men and women of our military all over the world uh i would say stay positive uh keep that positive mind frame i do believe in an uptick that we're going to see i do believe and i i've always believed in finishing something strong may not start off strong we may get a little wobbly might uh try and find our footing a little bit as we have been and kind of been knocked down a little bit <clears throat> got kicked in the gut a few times this year um, but we still got up and I do believe in finishing strong and I will end it and this answer with again, my, my gratitude and my family's gratitude for your service, all the men and women around the world. And certainly for the families, the wives, the husbands, the children who also sacrificed to at home. Um, thank you. Yes. So we appreciate your support and, uh, 
and, and I follow you on, on, on IG as well. And you always have some positive messages for, for people in general. So, so thank you for that. So uh, no worries, no worries. So uh, when I, when I pushed the promo initially that, uh, Hey, I was going to have the rock on the show. Uh, I got a text message from uh, uh, one of my uh, airmen that I used to supervise. And she was like, Oh my God, you got the rock coming. Hey, uh, I need you to shout him out. I need you to tell him my full name and this, that, and the third. And she was going, I mean, I got plenty of text messages because she absolutely adores you. So, uh, so, so after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let her come on here and tell it to you herself. So um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Technical Sergeant Lindsay Claire Rodriguez, because that's your full name, because you wanted me to tell the full name, right? Uh, she's coming to you from Keesler Air Force Base, Mississippi in Biloxi. Hey, John Rodriguez, the floor is yours. Thank you. First, I would just like to say thank you to my former supervisor, Chief Osby. I got and you for extending this opportunity to me. I'm super excited. And also to Big Daddy for agreeing to come and do this. For the <laughs> uh, I mean, I hurt you. So my question is twofold. The first part I would just like to ask in all of your life's accomplishments, which professional achievement and then which personal achievement has been the most rewarding and fulfilling for you? Um. Thank you for the question, and um, and thank you for the love. By the way, I, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the love. Um, I would say, uh, in in terms of my professional career, I, I've been a <clears throat> I've been a, been a pretty lucky guy uh, over the years to have accomplished a uh, few things, and and um, but the truth is, uh, it, it's actually. I get more out of thinking about the uh, the times of the losses and the failures, and I try to keep them at the forefront of my mind. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that keeps me sharp. I get a little weird that way. It's probably why I need therapy. Um, and I, I, but I will say professionally, and this may surprise a lot of people, is when I look back and 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 now, as you said, Chief, you follow me on social media. Thank you for that. Um, best thing I believe in my career professionally that happened was actually me getting into social media and embracing it. And I know it's a surprising answer, but at the end of the day, it, it, it's the one thing that has really allowed me to connect with people all over the world in an authentic way that, that there's no filter, mm -hmm. um, the good, the bad, the warts, the ugly, the wonderful, the wins, the losses. <laughs> um, and that has really, uh, uh, has been just so invaluable in my career because then it allows me, I could talk about this project, I could talk about that project, um, but more importantly, I, I could just have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with people. And that's been the most important thing. And, and, and since then, um, and Chief, you make up this, so thank you, um, is um, about four weeks ago, I wound up becoming the most followed um, man in America and the most followed American man in the world. And I would say, um, so it, it has to do with social media for sure. Um, because I treat it like a relationship, by the way, and you have to, you know. Um, and again, it allows me just to connect with people. And at the end of the day, that's always the most important thing to me is just connecting with people. And personally is uh, my family that I've just been so uh, really fortunate and lucky. You know, my little girls, I have three daughters. Uh, one's 19, one's four, the other one's two. I'm, I'm in a house of estrogen. I am surrounded by <laughs> estrogen. The only testosterone is just me and the dog. And, um, you know, there's that great saying that, uh, that every man uh, wants a son, but every, every man needs a, a daughter. And, um, and uh, they have been such an incredible blessing. I was married once. That didn't work out for me. So that, out of that marriage, I have a 19-year-old daughter I'm so incredibly proud of. But personally, for me, it's my family. Ooh, awesome answer. So with that, here's my little follow-up. Would All you right. mind asking Maui to give a shout out to my daughters, Trinity and Gracelyn, and Dr. Bravestone to give his infamous smolder for my sons, Giovanni, Gabriel, and Channing? Okay. Trinity and... Gracelyn. Gracelyn? Yes, sir. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Trinity and Gracelyn. Uh, this is Maui. Uh, now, I know I don't look like Maui, where's the hair, but I will tell you this, uh, I'm still, I still am Maui, and to prove it, um, let's see, 
honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was yeah. Maui just messing around. I could kneel and I buried its guts, sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. And the tapestry here on my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been and make everything happen. Look at that me, mini Maui, just tickety tapping. What can I say except you're welcome? There you go. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. That was so awesome. Man. Oh my gosh. Was, was that first time? What, what are your son's names again? I'm so smolder. sorry. Smolder. Try to give him the smolder. The smolder, yes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> again, that's why I need therapy on this one because I go around doing that all the time. What, it's going to get stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. And how old are your kids? Whew. Trinity's 18, Giovanni's 14, then we got Gabriel at 11, Channing is 10, and then I'm my dearest little six-year-old, Gracelyn. Oh, those are good oh. ages. Tell them all They're I said, please. Yes. Thank you so oh. much. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, and Chief. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Chief. I, I think it's time to t look at the comments and questions. Is that where you were going? Yeah, that's, that's exactly where I was going. How'd you know? <laughs> okay. All right, good. <laughs> you know, just telepathic through the computer oh, here. Oh, no, listen, we got, we here. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Johnson, just want to take a second to share that people are watching from all over the world. Mateus from Germany. Lynn says aloha. Trevor wow. is coming to us from Kabul, Afghanistan. Trina from Kuwait. Uh, Corinne from Italy. Sergeant First Class Fontanez is watching from Puerto Rico. There's folks tuning in from Okinawa. Um, so literally Beautiful. all over the world. Beautiful, guys. Thank you so much for all the love. Um, and, uh, and, and again, what an honor it is to speak with everybody. And, um, and I, I wish all of you guys around the world as you're stationed out there uh, a, a great holiday and, um, and, and get back home soon. So I, I had a comment on my on my page that wanted me to ask you how you felt when J Jabroni officially made the Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> it was great. It that, was and that's that. Texar Moore. Texar and Augustus Moore asked that question. <laughs> okay. it was, it's a great question. And yes, and so for everyone watching who was unfamiliar in the world of wrestling, I uh, had a whole bunch of catchphrases. I just love coming up with these catchphrases. One of them was Jabroni. Um, it's, 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 it's not a respectful word. So I, as a bad guy, I would call her this jabroni, that jabroni, lay the smack down on that jabroni. Um, and recently, I think in the past four weeks, it actually became a real word and recognized in Webster's, I believe it was Webster's dictionary. Um, and, uh, it was very, very cool, but let me just say this, this is very important. Uh, the originator of that word was a very famous pro wrestler um and he is still around and he's highly entertaining his name is the iron sheik oh yeah and he came up he came up with that word and i give him so much credit because he came up with the word he used to say it in the locker rooms and when i grew up in the world of wrestling and again for those who don't know watching uh my dad was a professional wrestler and my grandfather was a professional wrestler as a matter of fact my dad was um the first black tag team champions in the wwe back in the early 80s so he was a groundbreaker and a pioneer and he used to bring me in the locker rooms and I saw the Iron Sheik all the time at that time and he would use the word jabroni and I always remembered it when I was 10 years old. Years later, I was lucky enough to make it famous. So um, awesome. So I think we got time for one more question. Um, and I, I know it, I kind of want to combine the questions together. Um, with, with we got five minutes, Chief. We got it. Oh, we got five <laughs> minutes? Okay, cool. So um, just in, in the realm of so the military, we talk about physical fitness, we talk about mental, mental resiliency. Uh, can you, can you talk about the importance of a physical fitness? Cause I know you're getting it in at the gym uh, on your IG. Matter of fact, you had one, one post where you were bleeding and then Kevin Hart came and did a rendition of you bleeding uh, <laughs> and talking about, uh, you know, you know, you're getting it in at the gym. And also because it's huge in, in the military, we got to stay fit to fight. And we also got to be mentally resilient uh, to, to, to do what we do on a, on a daily basis. Can you, can you touch on those two topics, if you don't mind? I can. I'm happy to. We have to stay fit to fight uh, in life, in military. Um, and I always believe that the principles and the values that being in the weight room working out teaches us, men and women, at a very young age, are things that we can apply 
to life. And it is that commitment, it's the discipline, it's the sacrifices. These are all elements that are ingrained in the military. But I always feel too, you know, my dad used to take me down to the gym when I was six, seven years old. I used to beat my butt a little bit. Um, but then also he would, uh, on the wrestling mats, by the way. Uh, but then I would eventually start working out. So for me, training is really my anchor. It and, and yes, there's a physical aspect that I love. I'm a physical guy. I love it. I love grabbing the, the, the iron and throwing it around, and you know, continue to screw up my hands with these calluses. But it's the mental aspect that you know you realize is really the most important thing, um, and that's what training allows me to do. Because for me, training very early, I like to get up before the sun gets up. Uh, for some reason, I have this competition with the sun. If I can beat him up <laughs> every morning, that I'm in a good place. So. I like to train in the mornings very early, but it allows me to clear my mind. It allows me to think about the kind of day that I want to have. It allows me to think about the week, think about, you know, all this. And it just allows me to unplug for a moment because like with all of us, regardless of whatever the job is that we do, um, the moment, you know, we're in the gym, we put the earphones, uh, the headphones on uh, or the earphones in and that's your hour. That's your you time. That's your anchor. Um, and that for me is the, is the mental resiliency that I continue to, you know, harness and try and, um, you know, uh, continue to work on every day. Because then after that, once we leave the gym, then we belong to the world. We belong to our families and our friends and our jobs and everything else that pulls us in a thousand different directions. Um, but for me, I do need that, uh, I, do, I need my workout time every single day, some sort of physical activity that just allows me to reset and plug in uh, to you know that particular um, work assignment in the gym for the day. Hey DJ, it looks like we have one more um, shout out here for you. Uh, it looks like Amber from Fort Hood. She has a son named Jerry. He wants to know if you can do a, a happy birthday wish for him. Six years old. For Jerry. For Jerry, out of yeah. Fort Hood. Hey buddy, uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jerry. Happy birthday to you. Okay, remix. It's your birthday. No, I can't. <laughs> there you go, oh, Amber. Happy, happy so birthday. make sure and show that to Jerry. Yes. Happy yes. birthday. So, uh, DJ, we really, really appreciate you. It's been an honor. And a we could do another one. We, we, we got two minutes if you want to do a question. We got, what we got? We got another question? Let's Riley is asking about cheat meals. That's from Riley. Cheat meals, asking yes. If you can share a cheat meal. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's a commissary cake right there in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Go celebrate well, the well, Marine well, birthday. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, so so much like training, when we talk about training and how I need training, you know, just for my mental capacity and stability, uh, you need the cheat meals. And, uh, you know, I, I follow a, um, I'm a pretty regimented guy. Uh, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. Um, and uh, yeah, that includes my meals and um, everything is measured out. And, and um, I eat the, generally I eat the same thing every single day. Uh, <laughs> days and weeks and weeks, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and, uh, but the weekly cheat meals are important. So not only are it important to reset your body um, and your body's chemistry, but also, uh, again, just, uh, you know, kind of reset the mind. So I go full out, full tilt boogie. Uh, I do a French toast, but instead of cutting little slices, I'll cut them in like four or five inch. <laughs> oh, I, I don't mess around. No. I'll do that. And then I'll put peanut butter and I'll put syrup on it. And then I'll add, I started doing this. I started adding Terramana tequila to the syrup, mixing it up a little bit <laughs> yeah, on, the, uh, on the French toast. But I do that. And, and but, you know, also just with my babies and, and the girls now, they've reached that age where, you know, ice cream or cake or whatever it is. So I love enjoying it with them, too. And it just becomes like a like a family thing. Awesome. 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 I just got to stop eating cheap meals like four times a week that then I, I, I do a lot I, I do a lot better it's not a cheat meal if it's every day oh yeah man gotcha gotcha so uh uh dj man we really really appreciate your time i know you're on the set of a, of a movie uh that we're hoping to see next year definitely in the theaters a we're going to bring it to to theaters so so our military members can watch it 
Uh, please know this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, Space Force personnel. That's our newest newest service. Uh, happy, you know, happy birthday to the Marine Corps once again. And then Veterans Day, is to, Veterans Day is tomorrow. So freaking yes. happy Veterans Day to everybody that has has worn this this uniform, man. Because it, it there's a lot that comes along with it, man. And, and just I, I've been personally proud to 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 be be a part of such an awesome awesome um, organization, brotherhood, sisterhood, all that good stuff. So uh, thank you again for, for giving us some time. Uh, we, we really appreciate you. We support you. We, we definitely uh, uh, appreciate the, 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 the calmness and the, and the entertainment that you bring to our households. Because even where we're in hectic situations, we can have you do, imper well, your, your Maui, or we, we, we can just have a reason to smile, man. So thank you for giving us a reason to smile. No, um, thank you so much for that, Chief. Uh, thank you. Thank you for holding that up, Sergeant Major. By the way, I am. I'm going to come back to the team, and we're going to create exactly what you're asking for for our military. You have my word. That's going to be that's going to happen uh, with that mask. We're going to create a new one for you guys. Um, but thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it, and I've been looking forward to this for some time now. And um, but also to everybody around the world and certainly our veterans. Tomorrow is Veterans Day and active, non-active and, and again, families. I am truly, truly grateful. I've, I've had the real privilege and honor over the years to shake hands with and, uh, and bear hug uh, hard uh, men and women of our military and I am and their families. And I'm truly, truly grateful for your service and um, very proud. To, uh, we have a lot of very proud military men and women in our own family and my own family. Um, currently now in the Navy, uh, decorated out of the Navy too as well. Uh, so I, I thank you and I always surround myself with good military men too as well, just in terms of my own security detail. It's always very important. So uh, because there, because I will say this, there's, you can always rely on, this is what I say, you can always rely on, uh, there's a just a moral compass that you can you can you can you can bet your hard-earned dollar on that that's always there with our men, military men and women so i thank you guys i support you too and i love you very much thank you all right have a good awesome. one yay there you guys yeah chief chat out chief chat out chief chat. <laughs> <laughs>